Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Uh, we have a special guest with us this evening, Ian A. A. Watson, the line developer for Trinity Continuum, as well as community manager for Onyx Path Publishing, um, master of trivia for Bloodline Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which I discovered while I was doing my Let's Play of it. Um, I believe you also created the White Wolf Wiki. Yes. And you run the Onyx Path website as well. Yes. So, probably many other things that I'm missing, but social media, the Twi Onyx Path Twitch channel, etc., etc., etc. Most people have probably talked to you, even if they don't realize it. Yeah, if you're talking to the Onyx Path as an account, that's probably me. Yes, so. But tonight, I have you here because you are the line developer for Trinity, and yes. uh, per... The other week when we were, I mentioned it briefly on stream and straight up was like, I don't know enough about this game. You emailed me and said, let's talk about this game. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a deep dive on Trinity, what it's all about, the associated titles like um, Aberrant and International... I am going to screw it up again. Wrestling something. <laughs> International Wrestling Entertainment. Yes. And uh, many, many others. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um... So it, we were talking before we went on air and I said, I do have some simil familiarity with Trinity because I actually own <laughs> the original soft cover of uh, the first edition. Well, kind of second 1.5 ish, um, but I've never played it and I've never read the book cover to cover. So can you, can you give me a kind of overview of the history of Trinity? Like what the original concept was? which you weren't the original person who created it, but I know no. you know a lot about it because you know a lot of trivia about Comics Path and White Wolf games. <laughs> I do. Um, so back in probably 96, um, White Wolf started advertising that they had a science fiction game coming up. This was a game. Uh, the concept was sort of a reversed Borderlands where borderlands um like just the planet pandora is sort of the dumping ground for all of the the, the refuse the people of of the uh settled worlds mm -hmm. um in this case there was like there was like a cluster of colonies that were the core and you were kicked out of that uh so those were the, the titular, titular exiles it was going to be a new ip from mark rain hagen and in 96, he decided he didn't want to be involved with the running of White Wolf anymore, so he took Exile and left. Yep. Uh, and so with about nine months to go until publication, uh, White Wolf created their own new IP on the fly, which was uh, originally published as Aeon. So it was literally nine months between shit, we need a new science fiction game, and the book being in stores. So this was a very short timeline. Um, and uh, Aeon came out, and within... Uh, almost as soon as it came out, MTV's lawyers came calling and said, this is too confusingly similar to Aeon Flux, so you need to rename the game to Trinity. Well, you just need to rename the game, and they chose to rename it to Trinity, because reasons um so that was published for a few years uh two years later uh we went i say we but you know as you said it wasn't me involved mm -hmm. um it was uh the previous uh sort of, sort of the timeline was rewound a little bit uh to show what the primary antagonists of trinity were like earlier uh back when the Aberrants were still superheroes. Uh, and so that was like a superhero game, but set in the history of this science fiction game. Right. And then not a lot of people even, there were some people who thought this upcoming Aberrant thing was going to be like a monster book for Aeon. Uh, obviously it wasn't. And there, there was never like, uh, the World of Darkness games had the World of Darkness branding, but there was no name for the setting, so not a lot of people realized they were connected. Right. Uh, and then Aberrant lasted a little bit, and two years after that, uh, Adventure came out, which was the 1920s pulp game, which sort of 
started the whole thing. Uh, so that's the publication history of it. Okay. Um, and uh, after, so it, it was maybe five years from 1997 to about 2002. Uh, those three games sort of came out, had their brief little life and fizzled. And, um, you know, everyone, people at White Wolf liked the game. I liked the game. Uh, they tried to bring it back with the only rule set that was more popular than the storyteller system at the time, the <laughs> D20 system. So there were D20 versions of the rule books, which updated and changed a few things. Um, for example, in the rule book, you have uh, the the Upewa Macho, who are the teleporters. They are they've been missing for a while and they have not yet returned to the setting. So in the D20 rules, they have been back for about six months. Okay. So they are available to play right from the core rule book. Interesting. So uh, when we talk about the new rules, I don't specifically call them the second edition because the D20 versions have a different rule set and they have setting changes, so yep. they could be considered a new edition. Yep. And that's just not a fight I want to get into, so I just call these <laughs> the new edition. Yes. Um, so the D20 rule books came out around 2004 didn't do very well and uh it was sort of up to the fans to keep it alive for a long time mm -hmm. up until uh 2011 uh 2012 when uh ccp decided to stop production and onyx path was just getting started right um they obviously were not going to do anything with this ip and rich said i would like to buy a scion and i would like to buy trinity can I have them? And they said, sure, why not? <laughs> um, because the, the setting was was always sort of Rich's baby. Like right. he, Adventure, the sales of Trinity and Aberrant at the time did not merit doing Adventure, but Rich pushed for it to be done just as a single book. Interesting, okay. And as far as I'm concerned, it's probably one of the best single books Um like it, it's like a fully self-contained RPG that there are no supplements for it. It's one of the best single book RPGs that was released and certainly one of the best by White Wolf. Um, and, you know, I, I tried to keep it alive in the fandom for a while. Um, I, you know, was a loud voice. Um, and uh, they remembered that. And when Rich was, Rich had got himself the IP, he said, I think I see a way to bring Trinity back. Can you resend your old proposal? Because I had sent him back in 2005 to, to bring things back, mm -hmm. uh, sort of reboot things in the same way that the World of Darkness had been rebooted. Right. Um, and we didn't go with that pitch, but he remembered, and that was sort of the, the foundation for the the new edition of the, the new material. Fantastic. Oh. So it's it's been like a fifteen year journey for me to get these books out, and <laughs> it's it's I'm I'm glad they're finally out, and I'm glad people seem to be enjoying them so far. Absolutely, and we're getting a lot of them now too, because at midwinter, so back in January, I know they announced. Um, <laughs> hey Dixie, um, event a, a new version of Adventure and mm -hmm. Assassins, and I feel like there was another there's another one that I'm forgetting. Yes, uh, a couple months ago we announced Anima. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um. So it, one question I had is when did so when did it become Trinity Continuum? Was that so the original uh, rule books? Like I said, they they had no um, there there was no branding for the name mm -hmm. of the line until Adventure, right. where not even on the outside but like in the back somewhere. Uh, they refer to the setting as the Aeon Continuum. Okay. So that was the first time sort of there was a name for it. Right. Um, and then when the D20 versions came out, there was branding all of a sudden, uh, which called it the Trinity Universe. Okay. Which, which was neat. Uh, but then a couple of years later, there was the PlayStation 2 game called the Trinity Universe. <laughs> uh, so with Aeon and with Trinity Universe, like we just can't catch a break with these names. Um, so Rich sort of combined the two previous names, Aeon Continuum and Trinity Universe, into the Trinity Continuum. Because we 
this time around, we really want to dr- uh, dig into the continuum aspect of it. So mm-hmm. it's not just sort of a single universe. It's a whole, right. like, It's branching... a timeline. Right. Really. It's, it's very fitting. Um, so I, you and I talked about this briefly at Midwinter as well. You have Adventure, which is 1920s, 30s. Then you have Aberrant, which is modern day. The original Aberrant uh, was set in 2008, which at the time was 10 years in the future. Right. <laughs> uh, it's a little, little behind now. Um, so with the new edition, you have the core Trinity Kingdom, yep. which is its own thing. It's like, it's almost a new setting. Yep. Uh, a new aspect of the setting, I should say. Because... Uh, one of the things that had not never been done was the modern. So with you can play a modern day action adventure game. Yep. If you like Agents of Shield, or if you like Leverage, or if you like Fringe, or you know the Human Target, or any of those sorts of things. Okay. Just about any concept you can have for you know that fits in the umbrella of modern day action adventure uh, has support in the Core Trinity Continuum rulebook. So that was never really a thing before. Uh, so then you have uh, Aeon, which is set in 2123. Right. Uh, then you have Aberrant, which is set... We have moved the timeline up 20 years from... <laughs> uh, so all of... With Aberrant, we're like moving all of the events forward 20 years. Okay. So um, Nova's first start appearing in 20... 18, and then this is 10 years further on from that. Okay. Whereas in the original setting, everyone started showing up in 1998, and then it was 10 <laughs> years forward from that. Gotcha. So it's near future. It's near future, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, in the case of Adventure, we're moving the setting forwards 10 years, yep. but not the events. Okay. So originally... Uh, sort of the big explosion which kicks things off is 1923 and then the game took place in 1924. Okay. That is still when that happens, but instead of the game taking place in 1924, now it's 1924. So everyone had, you know, under their belt. Right. Also experienced and doing shit of being, holy crap, what's happening? <laughs> Broke up a little bit there. I just want to uh, double check something. Sure. Okay, no, we're good. Um, so, where does anim? Where? Oh, now I'm getting a warning that my internet connection is unstable. Let me. All right, I'm gonna put us on break for two seconds. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. There's a storm here, or it's been coming in and out, and I think it's just messing with my internet. We are all set, so um, back up just a little bit. So where does where do Anima and Assassin fit in then? Assassins is sort of running parallel to the uh, the modern setting. Okay. Uh, it's sort of the the dark underbelly of what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, there is going to be some overlap. Like if you're playing like a leverage sort of thing, you are already dealing with the crime world of uh, the Trinity Continuum. Yep. So, you know, you'll have a, a sort of a foot in both worlds. Um, Assassins came about because uh, Neil Price was uh, binge watching John Wick yep. uh, and playing, I, it was either Hitman or Assassin's Creed, probably Hitman. I think it was Hitman, yeah, because I was talking to him about it. <laughs> and he just said just like what if we put these together and that was great because um 
like a lot of that is stuff I wanted to cover sort of within the core setting anyway, yeah. but it never really f fit in or should I say was prioritized with all the other right. more positive stuff happening. So having an excuse to do like, what if all these secret assassination guilds, I mean, that, that was a gimme. I had to. Uh, like Assassin's Creed, Hitman, um, Wanted, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, True Lies. I mean, it, you can just keep on going on and on and on right. with all of this stuff that fits into that genre. Now, that's that's the one that got me very excited because uh, I was like, yes, I want to play John Wick, or yes, I want to play Assassin's Creed. You know, setting. Um, my favorite yeah. part of the Assassin's Creed series was always Astergo or Abstergo, <laughs> like yeah. that storyline i was like yeah going back in the past is fun but like what is going on with all this stuff um yeah. that'll be very exciting so with the different books and the different points in time that everything is set in um it feels like there's still a little bit of two two games running side by side because you have like Trinity, and then you have Aberrant. So where, where how, and Aberrant, I said this earlier, um, correct me if I'm wrong, they were originally kind of the antagonists in Trinity, but then, in, but they're heroes in their own game. All bad guys are heroes in their own <laughs> game, but, um, but where, where's the crossover there? Like, tell me more about Aberrant. <laughs> okay. Uh, the story of Aberrant is um, in 2018, uh, an orbital research station, uh, the, the Galatea explodes in orbit, and then uh, almost immediately afterwards, a firefighter in New York, uh, fighting, you know, five alarm fire, manages to absorb all of the fire into his body. And then people with weird powers just start cropping up all over the place. And, uh, you know, some people are rightly terrified of all of these people like especially given some of the powers that are being uh, right. demonstrated um so the aeon society is quick to jump in mm -hmm. um and you know grab a, a bunch of of people who you know check out psychologically and uh, brand them as team tomorrow look kids they're superheroes and right. that's something we can contextualize like okay they're they're superheroes they're not weird freaks of nature. Uh, and, you know, some people are going to be, just like in Marvel comics, there's always people who are like, okay, you know, people like Spider-Man are fine because they got their powers, but <laughs> these mutants, yeah. I don't trust mutants. So in this setting, basically everyone is a mutant. So there's always going to be the people who sort of refer to them disparagingly as aberrants. Um, but for the most part, if they, they do good, um, but it's it's not like just because someone has powers that doesn't make them a good person right so there are plenty of uh, other groups there um, there's uh the terrigen mm -hmm. who are sort of like magneto's brotherhood of humans in that they don't believe they count as humans anymore okay. or they're the next evolution of humans the rest of us are just monkeys right um so each Nova is a law unto themselves. And Grashers is saying Divis Mal's right. <laughs> Divis Mal is the, the Magneto stand in here. Yeah. Uh, so um, each Nova is a law unto themselves. They decide for themselves what is right and what is wrong. Okay. And hu like human morality, human politics have no impact on them whatsoever. The humans disagree, of course. Yeah, they tend to. Um, <laughs> And um, the the mayor of Tampa at one point said, uh, "Like I I'm like no no aberrant freaks are allowed within the bounds of Tampa." Okay. And one uh, Garyon, who is one of the the more mutated, inhuman looking novas, he shut up with a bunch of his buddies, and uh, basically melted the mayor. Nice. And said, "Look, you call us aberrants, fine, we're aberrants." And so while, while the Terrigen is more of a philosophy and you can be a good guy and still like have Terrigen sympathies, 
the Everents are a subsection of the Terrigen who are just like, you know, they're, they're like terrorists, basically. Yep. They, they are Nova rights activists, but they're, they're fucking terrorists. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you're, you're melting people, that's, yeah. Um, and there's like uh, the, the Daedalus League, who are, like, we have powers that allow us to survive out in space, that allow us to, you know, travel extreme distances. Why not explore like we couldn't before? Let's land people on Mars without having to take a fucking rocket to get there. <laughs> Just here is a hole in space. Walk through. Um, and they're they're assisting with the building of a uh, new orbital station, uh, which is you know less like the International Space Station and more like the the giant rotating ring that you see in two thousand one, the Space Odyssey. Gotcha. Like a, a, an actual real formal space station, right? <laughs> um, and you know, there's there's a lot of fun groups, but. Um, the problem is well from the context of aberrant the game yeah uh, there's something called transcendence where um in order to evolve your powers you have to push your powers beyond their limits and the human body because novas are still basically limited by human bodies so no matter how mutated they look um the human body is not meant to channel that much power right so you accumulate transcendence and once you hit transcendence 10 you're basically out of the picture from the context of aeon that's called corruption okay aberrants get more and more and more inhuman until they're barely recognizable both physically and psychologically as ever having been human gotcha so uh in in the middle there in the 2060s, there is the Aberrant War, where um, increasingly inhuman Novas are doing more and more drastic things and fucking things up for everyone else. <laughs> uh, Florida gets sunk. Uh, the The internet crashes. Um, the The entire like um, about a thousand mile radius of uh, America's grain belt has just been burned uh, and irradiated. Fun. Uh, yeah. Um, things are not great. So humans declare war on Novas, the aberrant war, and eventually it escalates to uh, the, the Chinese ultimatum, uh, also called the Earth Strike ultimatum. Hmm. China has a bunch of uh, orbital platforms armed with fusion warheads. <laughs> aimed at earth saying <laughs> you guys need to leave or we will nuke the planet i don't care if all of us are going to die because we'll kill you too and they said fair enough we're not wanted and they leave okay uh but some of them want to come back and in the aeon setting they do okay cool interesting so w by the time they come back you know they don't even look human anymore mm. Right. At that point. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Um, so th this, this question may not make sense, but it's because I don't fully know how things integrate. Um, sure. Are there aberrants in adventure? Or could there be aberrants in adventure if you wanted there to be? Like, is it easy to just kind of inject them into other points in the timeline if you wanted to sure okay but uh canonically yes and no depending on your definitions uh in adventure um there is a gentleman uh, dr sir calvin hammersmith who invites a bunch of people to his estate to demonstrate his new tilleric engine uh, he has discovered essentially zero point energy, okay, which is an infinite source of energy, right? This will solve the world's problems, and he wants to demonstrate this engine to to a bunch of his high society friends to you know to get more fun basically. Yeah. Uh, and he turns it on, and it does not go well, and there and it causes a, essentially like a a sub quantum explosion thing. Uh, he dies. And 
people right at the center either die or get imbued with incredible amounts of power. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And then outside of that, it just sort of ripples around Earth, imbuing people with various abilities. Um, so you have uh, mesmerists who are people with, you know, psychic powers. Yep. So they're sort of the, the precedent to uh, the scions of the Aeon setting. You have stalwarts who are, you know, people who can, you know, rip a safe out of a wall or, yep. you know, uh, leap over tall buildings in a single bound. People who are, they're, they're, they're imbued with physical abilities. Uh, so they're the, what will one day become Novas. Yep. Uh, including a young man by the name of uh, Michael Donegal, who uh, will one day be known as Divismel. <laughs> uh, and then there's Maxwell Anderson Mercer, who gains the apparently unique ability to travel through time. <laughs> he, while everyone else goes, wow, I have these weird powers, he vanishes and is not seen again for another six months and when he reappears he's like i have i know some things are going to happen and we need to be prepared so i'm founding the aeon society for gentlemen ah okay so, okay so that makes sense all right that's so now i can see there's a lot of threads that start tying together um because at face value the trinity continuum is very confusing <laughs> but sure you can see if yeah if you look at adventure and then you look at things how they stack up a lot of strings in there that's that's cool so in the international wrestling entertainment book where yes. where in the timeline does that fall <laughs> that is said in average um it's it's just a supplement it's not like a full thing okay. um, in the original edition there was uh, a book called the XWF, the Extreme Warfare Federation. But uh, since then, uh, there has been a real XWF, which I think is also owned by Vince McMahon. So, you know, in order to avoid any more potential legalities with names, we've, uh, with this new edition, we're just calling it uh, the NWE. The concept is the same. Um, and we're expanding on it. Uh, the idea is, like, uh, in a world with people who have all these crazy powers who can take all this kind of punishment, who's interested in watching regular wrestling anymore? So, right. it is a, it's a Nova Wrestling League, yeah, basically. Or, in this case, two Nova Wrestling Leagues, because there are two different things going on. One is the more showy, almost soap opera right. style of... Um, like the modern WWE, yep. and one is a bit more of um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, mixed martial arts. Okay, so like a UFC sort of. Yeah. Or okay, like it's it's more of like an underground ring sort of thing. Okay. Uh, Ill yeah, Fight Club, Ill illegal boxing rings, things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like they're they're getting a bit of of uh, reputation, but it's still probably not entirely legal and no one's quite in, quite sure who runs it okay well, I, I know that <laughs> unlike unlike mixed martial arts there there is that uh there is a bit of the element of the showmanship because i mean people come to, to watch novas beat the shit out of each other so yeah you know yeah yeah i see mark in chat now and i know he's very excited for this oh. um all right, so adventure. I'm just I'm going. I'm like slotting these in and sort sort of the timeline, yeah. and then figuring out what else I need. What else is missing in my head? Yeah. So, uh, in the timeline, you have adventure, which is set in the 1930s. Yep. Uh, we moved that up actually. 19. Sorry, brief divergence. Uh, right. The original setting was chosen uh, as 1924s, even though the pulps are traditionally 1930s. Yes. Uh, because. Um, Nazis were always like a big bad guy in pulps and the original crew, you know, wanted a bit of breathing room. Yep. Like, let's let's play with some other stuff and not just default to Nazis. Yeah. 
Whereas now we're like, you know what? Maybe we could use a bit more punching Nazis. A little bit. So let's add 10 years onto that. Let's give everyone a bit more experience. And now we can kick the shit out of the Nazis. Um, so uh, 1930s adventure, punching Nazis. Okay. That's your Indiana Jones. Yep. It's your Phantom, uh, your Shadow, all of that good stuff. Um, then there's the modern day setting and assassins, which are running parallel to each other. Yep. Then there's aberrant, which is set 10 years in our future. Right. Then there's anima, which is set in 2084. Okay. And then there's aeon, which is set in 2123. Okay. So this might might so Aeon is more similar to Aeon slash Trinity. Like that's kind of, the, those are more paralleled or is the original Aeon slash Trinity more similar to Continuum? Kind of like that setting. The book you have yes. is the 2120s. So. Okay, yeah, cool. Interesting, okay. Yes, that one. <laughs> uh, I like... That you can kind of say, okay, I have these four, well, soon to be like five, six books. And I can play in whatever setting I want, but it's it's still centered around, you know, similar to World of Darkness, it's still centered around our world, kind mm -hmm. of as, as like that central center point, and it's either the past or the future, um, alternate timeline sort of thing. I'm just, I'm trying to think, where... Not really aware but so in a so in assassins for example you'll it's kind of blending that like assassin's creed hitman john wick uh mm -hmm. atomic blonde sort of thing what would i guess it's kind of like a wish list thing but you're also the line developer so you don't want to say ideas you actually have but like is there is there another setting you would want to explore with this Oh yeah, absolutely. I've got like four more. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 like, and uh, of course, Assassins wasn't even one that I came up with. So there's always the possibility right. that someone else is going to throw something in on top of what I want to do. Uh, it's it's just a matter of getting stuff approved, really. Um, one that I have mentioned wanting to do, uh, which I spoiled a few years ago, but has not yet got confirmation. So this is still pie in the sky. It's called uh, Aegis. Okay. It's um, the original adventure. Let's see if I can find a page reference real quick. Um, probably not, but uh, it has a letter from, uh, well, not a letter. It's more like a diary entry from uh, Divis Mal, uh, supposing that you know, in ancient times, if if people like us happens to exist, then uh, what we call daredevils might have been, you know, their heroes. You know, what we call mesmerists might have been their wizards and sorcerers, and what we call uh, stalwarts may have been gods. Yeah. So, I kind of want to do an ancient Greek setting where that is literally ha what's happening. Nice. So, okay. It's whereas Scion is the ancient gods in the modern world. I want to do sort of the opposite of that, where it's more of like a science fictional take in the ancient world. Yeah, that would pair well. I like it. Uh, and, you know, you we would take, I, I would want to do some stuff with like Hercules and Xena, use that as inspiration just because it's fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, a, a little bit more historically accurate than they were, but. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> um,. Assassin's Creed slash Dad of War. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it, the, I was thinking about this earlier because we talked about you had like the storyteller version and we had the D20 version mm -hmm. for reasons. It, having not played this, what system does the what does what system does Continuum use? Okay, um, because it's owned by Onyx Path. Yes. Uh, we weren't going to go with storyteller. Which, especially with some of the the higher scale stuff that happens in Aberrant, yep, first edition, it it kind of broke in a lot of ways. Um, 
with what we called the mega attributes at the time. Uh, essentially, if you did not buy mega dexterity, your character was screwed. Um, and it, it did not bounce well. It was a very good attempt, but ultimately the storyteller system was created for horror games. And, you know, it, it, it could be messed around with a little bit. It worked pretty well for Exalted, but when you get down to brass tacks, it just was not designed for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, when we picked up Scion, S-C-I-O-N and not P-S-I-O-N, um, when we picked up Scion and the Trinity games, we knew that, you know, we, we have these epic scale games and we're going to need a new system for them. So we came up with the story path system, okay. which um, was built to handle the kind of stuff that we needed it to do. Right. Um, it's, it's very familiar. If you're, if you know the storyteller system, it's still a D10 dice pool system. You're still going to see a lot of the like similar attributes and skills and everything on there, but um, it plays very differently. Yes. Uh, my only familiarity with it is uh, it came from beyond, beneath the sea and beyond the grave now. So, yes, which... that uses story path. Yeah. Uh, right now we have uh, the four things which use story path. Uh, the Trinity Continuum, yep. Scion, uh, the They Came from, from series, yep. and uh, Dystopia Rising Evolution. Yes. Next one up. I love Zombie Apocalypse games. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a story path game. What, I guess, diving more, a little deeper into the mechanics of it, like, so, so They Came From games are different from Scion. I've started reading. What what is different in what what minutia is different in Trinity that makes you know because like you have um quips and cinematics in they came from what were kind of more the unique traits of Trinity mechanics. That was a very long winded way of saying that. <laughs> uh full disclosure I'm not a rules guy. I'm not the one who came up with it. Like I had some yeah. input into how it was going to be shaped, but uh, Daniel Lozon is sort of the story path guru. Okay. Yeah. So if if you have like big story path questions, she's probably the one you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. I'm the static guy. Gotcha. Um, but the Trinity Continuum, more than any of the others, is probably going to be your core story path experience. Um. So other games, you know, Scion too, to a certain extent. Yep. Um, we were doing more development with the Trinity Continuum than Scion was. Mm -hmm. So Scion sort of got delayed because Neil kept on looking at what we were doing and saying, like, I'm going to steal that and I'm yep. going to take that and I'm going <laughs> to add that. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, so Scion looks very similar to the Trinity Continuum, but a lot of that was just because we did it first and he stole it. Um, Damn you, Neil. And then uh, Dystopia Rising and um, they came from, came after that. So they're they're bolting on different stuff on top of that to make theirs more distinct. Okay. So, so we don't really have anything distinctly unique about uh, how the Trinity Continuum runs in terms of how Story Path works because it's just sort of the fundamental system. Okay, it's like the stripped down pure story path without the additional things that like they came from at. Right. Oh, cool. okay, interesting. I wouldn't call it like stripped down, yes, but I wouldn't call it simple. Uh, yeah, aberrant right. is probably yeah. <laughs> like the upper end of complexity for uh, the story path system. Right. Um, but like not on the level of Exalted Third Edition. <laughs> Which I've never played, but I have heard many things about. <laughs> and yes. I know that the complexity of Exalted Third Edition is why this is happening. Um, cool. Okay. So, I guess I guess if you were going to pitch Trinity to like a table of players who've never heard of it before, what would be kind of like your short pitch of like, here's why you want to play this game? Uh, do you like to play anything in the action adventure umbrella? <laughs> like yeah. there, 
both in the specific sense for the core of a book and also i mean that covers science fiction that covers pulp that yep. covers superheroes so do you like any of that yes good we're in action here's the game yeah pick one of these three cool okay um what's your favorite part about it oh geez other than like the setting <laughs> yeah um like what made you such a big fan 15 plus years ago well when trinity first came out um other than the straight fighter rpg it was the first time white wolf had done something that wasn't the world of darkness right uh so i was instantly you know what is this thing i want to check it out um and what i loved was that it was very much a kitchen sink sort of setting like it was generically sci-fi but um if you wanted to do a cyberpunk dystopia you had to the abandoned narcologies of the federated states of america if you want to do like a firefly or a battlestar galactica just hop on one of the leviathan jump ships and rocket off to one of the colonies if you want to do i don't know um sequest dsv i mean oceania is a nation in and of itself so you could do that uh any sort of subgenre of science fiction has a place in the Trinity setting. So I, I really enjoyed that. So not only can you just like, okay, all I want to do is like, I want to do a, a sequest thing week after week after week, you, mm -hmm. you can do that. Or you can almost like switch genres every week. Like each, each like session you have is a different environment or different, like, okay, let's, we were we found out the conspiracy happening, you know, in the FSA, and it leads us to this colony. So let's go visit the colony. And oops, we've been attacked in transit, and now we need to investigate something happening on Mars. And you know, you can just go all all sorts of crazy, and I love it. That's awesome. I definitely it, it, so baseline. I'm definitely like okay. Now I, I want to pick up these books and play it. Uh, mm -hmm. If someone like myself has never played it before, what would you recommend that they pick up other than just like the book? Like, would you be like, you should check out Aberrant first or you should like look into like look at Adventure? I know that the new version of Adventure isn't out yet, but. Well, that really all depends on what you like. Like some people just aren't going to be science fiction people. So right. I'm not going to recommend Aeon to them. Um, all else being equal, I would say just pick up the core rulebook because it's new to this edition. Mm -hmm. um, like that, just that that modern day setting didn't previously exist, and it's kind of my baby. This is this is my big contribution to this setting. Like everything else, we're, we're revising previously established material, which is fun, but this is this is the new thing. Yeah. Um, this this was previously non-existent, and now it does, and um, it's great that we have an established fan base from the games that were published 20 years ago and like, hey, I really loved playing Aberrant before, I want to play Aberrant again. That's cool. That's great. But I feel like people are only picking up the core book so that they can play those other games and not in and of itself. Right. So I want people to pay a bit more attention to the thing that I made. Right. Fantastic. So, um, kind of looking forward, I know I already talked about three books that are in process. Um, where are I? Just I know it's in the Monday meeting notes, but where is Adventure and Assassins in the, the process right now? Where are? Uh, I will look that up for you. Okay, <laughs> I was just curious. I was wondering if you do off the top of your head, um, but I, I, I'm sure it's in the Monday meeting notes, in which I was reading earlier today. I just they went shoof. Although I yeah. noticed that I think. Uh, and the the wrestling one into a new phase, which Mark was very excited about. <laughs> so, Anima is still in first drafts. Okay. Uh, the, a supplement for Aberrant Novas Worldwide is in red lines. The Adventure Core is in second drafts. Okay. Uh, Assassins is in development. Yep. As is Mission Statements, which is a book for Aeon. Yep. And Under Alien Skies is in manuscript approval. Okay. Uh, International Wrestling Entertainment is in editing. Fantastic. And then 
at the Avrant core is in post editing development. Awesome. Thanks for the ones. Someone was asking about earlier in chat where, where they were with Avrant. Post it. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I will post the link to the Monday video notes right there. Wondering, so. Phrasing. I haven't gotten much sleep. Um, so I like all of them. <laughs> My answer is I like sci-fi and I like pulp and I like good. I like X Men, <laughs> which Avern is very X Men e, but take it in, you can take it in the X Men direction or you can take it in like the Justice League direction. Right. Uh, you kind of use comic book references. Um, of the of the original, actually, I think it was what I asked, which what was your favorite? Of the original, well, I got hooked on uh, the original Trinity. Yep. But um, I think I mentioned um, it was either at the very beginning of this or it was in our Preview. little pre-talk yeah. uh, that Adventure is, I think, sort of the best yeah. single rule book that uh, White Wolf put out. Like it, it was not designed to have supplements. It was just one book and done. And I just loved both the the layout of the book and the the way it was structured and it's it's a beautiful book and it, it reads so well and it was very daunting like i uh, when rich gave me the trinity continuum i basically didn't want to change adventure at all uh because it was just the, what can i improve on it's it's just great on its own Walk the rule set out and yeah <laughs> put it on um, the world now Except for punching Nazis, obviously that's a big. Yes. Yeah, we we need more of that. Very nice. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, I guess this is a this is a funny question. Sure. Why don't we see more Trinity content um, out? Why do you think we don't? I mean, because I know obviously, like World of Darkness has its fan base. Um, it is one of the most probably in the top five. I don't think it's the top two, and I don't think it's like the second most popular tabletop game anymore because Pathfinder is a thing. <laughs> but um, yeah. it's in the top five. Um, and Onyx Path has a lot of games they develop, but we don't see. I you know I'm I'm disappointed that I haven't seen any Trinity actual plays going on the Onyx Path channel or. Um, do you is that something you would want to bring more to the focus moving forward um are you waiting for more content uh because you have so many books in development um we have had uh, a, a few mm -hmm. um there was hard holidays um there was uh damage control that um one? that was a, an aberrant one okay uh, um so you know there there have been a couple and the books the, the core rule books have only been out for like seven months now. Right, so right. It's, it, it hasn't been out for, for a, a long time. Um, I would like to see more. Mm -hmm. um, if like it, our, our Twitch uh, streaming schedule has limited room. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's basically like what people are willing to run. Like if someone comes to us and says, I want to run this game of Promethean, and we can fit it into the schedule. Okay, there's Promethean on the schedule. Um, I, I would love to see more Trinity stuff um, because I want to see people enjoying the games that I spent a long time making. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what have you heard people like most excited for from the upcoming stuff? Like I, I, I've told you, like Assassins is a game that when uh, I heard about it at Midwinter, I was like, okay, I'm going to pay more attention to this that grabbed me but then i heard more about adventure because i hadn't heard about it before i was like okay i love pulp i love indiana Jones, that stuff um but from the general community what are people most excited about uh a lot of the the, the fans that we have are returning fans yeah. so people are excited about ever people are excited about adventure that's okay. the two key things um and that's expected you know mm -hmm. that's um we, we have more previous fans than we have current fans um 
and I mean, like new current fans. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I, I love the existing fans. I am an existing fan, so I, I do not progress from that. But, <laughs> um, you know, also we're doing a lot of new stuff. Yeah. And um, I, I know people want to see th their favorites return, but I, I hope people also want to check out some of the new stuff that we're making. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I'm excited for Assassin. Mark is incredibly excited for international wrestling entertainment. Um, okay. I'm, I'm also personally very excited to check out Aberrant now. Uh, now that I've learned more about it, I think Aberrant probably... Well, Aberrant and Aeon, I think, are the ones I would dig into immediately. Uh, obviously, in the war, um, because... War. <laughs> but yeah. um, more so to me than adventure in, in, in an initial sense. Um mm -hmm because just in terms of what i could run with um in terms of playing a game i probably would actually jump to it towards adventure first um because creating a character and playing them in that setting would be right obviously development and setting wise we talked about all that but in terms of running the game um mm -hmm. like what is your favorite kind of setting and experience to run a game or with Trinity. You froze. Sorry. I froze. Okay, yeah. No, I just had another yeah. lag spike. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I was going to, I was just asking in terms of GMing Trinity, what's your favorite yeah. setting to like, what style game? Uh, you know what? I'd probably run Aeon. Just, it's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, the, the feel of the new edition is very Mass Effect and and mm -hmm. I'm a big Mass Effect fan. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I might even... Like, if I were going to just run Mass Effect, I would probably just use the Aeon system for that. Noted for all our Mass Effect fans. Are, have you played Mass Effect before? I, I've i played the first one. I haven't okay. actually played the, the other ones. So, Biotics, basically Psychic Powers. Okay. And like the the rest of it, you don't even really have to change anything. It's, it's just, yeah, kind of it's Mass Effect one to one. Um, it it's the Mass Effect RPG, but it came out ten years before Mass Effect. Hmm. <laughs> At least they I have <laughs> I have heard that the Mass Effect team uh, does have some people who are fans of Trinity on it. I have not had that confirmed, but they are at least aware of White Wolf games because Mass Effect Andromeda had um, there was an uh, once you go to the Krogan colony in Andromeda um, and you visit it a few times there is an email you can see about they're trying to get together a LARP group to play uh, Krant the Ragening so I do have a couple questions for you that are completely unre unrelated to Trinity. <laughs> and okay. I've asked you one of them before. How do you remember so much random trivia about Bloodlines? I don't know. I <laughs> I know trivia in general. Yep. Um, and, like, I couldn't tell you what I had for lunch yesterday, but, you know, I, I can tell you the exact date that Trinity came out, uh, November 11, 1997. Happened to be the same day that uh, the uh, digital web crashed in Mage the Ascension. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what relevance is that to anything? I don't know, but it's in here. <laughs> um, and then I guess on a broader scale, like you created the White Wolf Wiki. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what drove you to... I mean, obviously, like, having a repository, I've referenced it all the time. Like, it's much mm -hmm. faster for me to reference that than to dig up the PDF of one of the books that I have all of <laughs> And pull up information. I'm just like, hold on a minute. Um, Like, was it... Was that... Like, what was the impetus? For well, part of it was um, I had, at that time, recently discovered Memory Alpha, which was the Star Trek wiki. Okay. Um, and I thought, this is a fucking great idea. Look, look at how easy it is to look stuff up. Uh, 
And hey, I'm a repository for trivia. I should put that down somewhere so other people can benefit from that. And then I just started going through my books and you know writing a, a few paragraphs on everything I came across through in some page references and uh, the ball got rolling from there. That was 15 years ago. Yeah, been around for a while. Um, yeah. And then I know, how did you get involved with Onyx Path? Uh, I, well, I got asked to, um, to come back for the Trinity universe specifically because yep. of the previous pitch I had sent in. And, um, after that, uh, Rich and Eddie had been, you know, that White Wolf was no longer publishing and they were doing something weird and, <laughs> uh, this Cavaliers of Mars jumpstart had come out, which was, you know, art directed by Rich, and it had this little Onyx Path logo in the corner, and no one knew what was going on there. And he came to me and said, do you know anyone that can do some videos for us? Because I think they were launching the, like a Kickstarter or something at yep. the time. Uh, do you know someone who could do videos for us? And also, do you know anyone who can run a website? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there, there's this thing we're doing. It's called Onyx Path Publishing. And we've got the license to keep publishing things. Cool. Okay. Do you want someone to do your social media too? Because they're going to need that. Okay. <laughs> nope. So I just almost accidentally fell into it. And I've been doing it for eight years now. Nice. Um, what? I kind of asked this earlier with regard to Trinity. And you talked about Aegis. But like if what pet project would you work on that you're not right now? If, if someone said, hey, do you want to run Planescape <laughs> instead of the Trinity Continuum, I would have an extremely difficult decision to make. Yeah. Planescape, I got into before Trinity. It came out in 1994. Yep. And, you know, I've got a big lady of pain tattoo on my back. Um, it, it is my favorite D&D &D setting. Um, it was sort of my gateway drug into White Wolf games. Um, so, yeah. Um, if I could do something with Planescape, I would absolutely love to. But I highly doubt that opportunity is going to come up. Um, I did... Uh, one of my first uh, writing jobs was I wrote the plane of Earth and the plane of Limbo mm -hmm. for uh, Edge of Infinity, which was yep. uh, the Scarred Lands planner book. Awesome. Very cool. So that was kind of, that kind of summarized what I wanted to ask. Uh, is there anything else... Um, just in terms of Trinity or projects you're working on that you want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Um, we didn't get to talk much about Anima. Uh, really? Anima <laughs> is set in 2084, yep. which uh, is the same year that Don't Know As You Remember Me takes place, and also uh, Total Recall, uh, at least the reboot. I'm not sure about the original. Um, picked because it's a hundred years forward from 1984. Um, and uh, it's set after the Aberrant War, but before Scions show up. Okay. And in the Aeon setting, artificial sentences and uh, so the, the sort of cyberware that like has direct neural interfaces, those have both been outlawed. And this is the reason for that. So we're going for sort of political, which um, is uh, um, it's sort of your 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 you have character stats sort of thing. Um, so that th there's this MMO um, called Terra Surge that uh, sort of it's it's half the setting. You know, you go you d dive in with your brain implant class um, and then the other half of that is sort of what I've taken to calling light cyberpunk 
uh, there's dark cyberpunk is sort of like your your Blade Runner, where even when it's daytime, it's nighttime. Um, it's always raining, it's oppressive, mm-hmm. and then your more light cyberpunk is you know the sky is bright blue, all the buildings are bright white with bright you know splashes of color everywhere, um, sort of you know concealing the corruption underneath. Um, almost that like that marble white quality. Yeah, it's kind of like um, I've only I've only watched the Netflix series, but Altered Carbon, where you have like underbelly and then or up in the clouds, stark contrasts. Okay. Right. Um. So, uh, in the after the devastation of the Everant War, people are rebuilding, and uh, one of the locations that they're building is uh, a. a I don't think we've revealed it yet, but uh, there, there's one particular city where this is largely going to be set. Um, and sort of uh, people have taken to, like the, this brain implant glass is nearly ubiquitous. And uh, it's it's largely um, an effort to cope with the aberrant war. Like a lot of people have PTSD, not even from fighting, just you know from living. Um, so, you can re-experience memories of loved ones that you may have lost. You can um, go on vacation like Total Recall. Um, and you can uh, you can dive into Terra Search, which is the world's most popular MMO. Except some of the most popular streamers are just dying. Like on air while they're playing. What the hell is going on? Uh, so there's there's weird stuff happening, uh, both in the real world and in the virtual world, and the areas where they cross. And uh, there's a lot happening, and it's it's an interesting setting. It's, nice. It's a it's a very focused setting. Like most of the other game lines are sort of what is happening in the world. Yeah. Here it's very much what is happening in this one city. This because story. That's you know that's very cyberpunk. Yeah. Like mo- a lot of the cyberpunk things are you are. Like you're in Neo Paris, you're in Los Angeles, you're you're just in this one city. What's going on? Nice. Okay. I in terms of uh, <laughs> other projects, change my am... previous answer. That's the one. Oh, I'm y- in now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're we're having a lot of fun with that one. I I hope you check it out. I will. Um, but the others are probably coming up before that, so you yeah. will have your chance to check out Adventure before you check out Anima. Perfect. Um. Uh, in terms of other projects, I'm co-developing with Chris Allen, uh, Victorian Mage. Yep. Uh, we're in the final stages of that, uh, and that is going to be hella fun. Uh, I, I love the Victorian period. Mm-hmm. I love Mage. I love Mage in the Victorian period, and we get to explore that. Awesome. Now that one's—I know uh, Rick, my other, the uh, the third <laughs> person kid is uh, very excited about Mage stuff, so that'll be cool. Excellent. Great. So um, we talked about it at the beginning, but I was going to cover it again briefly. You also are the community manager and kind of the person behind the Onyx Path social media and Twitch channel. So um, if people want to find you online and ask you more questions about Trinity that I did not ask here, where can they find you? Uh, me personally, I, I can be found on Twitter at Von Ather, V-O-N-A-E-T-H-E-R. Uh, I have a public Facebook page at uh, ianaawatson.creative uh, where I post, you know, some of the projects I'm working on or just, you know, some bullshit meme that I came up with because as Eddie and Dixie have pointed out, I'm a well-known shit poster. Yes. Um, <laughs> you definitely changed the cover of the Gahanna book to be Gahanna Gaming <laughs> yes, at one point. I, I have done that. Um and otherwise, yeah, I'm I'm usually uh, behind the Onyx Path accounts. So yep. Find me on theonyxpath.com, on Twitch, hi, as the Onyx Path, <laughs> um, yep. on Facebook as the Onyx Path, on Twitter as the Onyx Path. So if you have any like Onyx Path questions, you can contact me there. Or if you just want to to bug me, you can talk to one of my personal accounts. Awesome. Great, and I know um, in terms of Onyx Path news, uh, as of yesterday, you announced that the next Kickstarter will be They Came From Beyond the Grave. Correct. On um, the 21st, right? Uh, whatever Tuesday is. Yes, yeah. 21st. So I, I know I'm excited for that one. I've voiced 
much much interest in that game and i also played in the um preview of yes. it at uh onyx path gaming convention so that people should definitely watch out for that um anything else on the horizon besides that uh, uh well as you know i uh have contributed to the unofficial patch for bloodlines yes uh and uh reportedly I have not had this confirmed by anyone from Hard Suit, but I have had it confirmed by West, who is sort of the lead developer for the unofficial patch. Okay. Uh, apparently, everyone who worked on the unofficial patch is getting their names in the credits for Bloodlines 2. Awesome. So, watch Bloodlines 2 from my name at the end of the game. That'll be cool. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Uh, last final question. Surprise round. Uh, what is oh. your favorite random Easter egg in Bloodlines? Oh, um, it's. I think I don't think it's in vanilla. It is in the plus patch, mm -hmm. where, which uh, restores a lot of incomplete content. Yep. But um, uh, I recently found out that uh, if you um, if you look carefully in uh, the um, the DMP area above uh, Ground Zero in Hollywood. Uh, there are some film canisters on the ground. And if you look very closely at those film canisters, they're Buffy the Vampire Slayer film canisters. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yep. I think mine is probably the dan giant dancing werewolf. That's well, just because it took said, me by surprise. Yes. You said random Easter egg. I thought, okay, what's the first thing I can think of that not a lot of people know about? So No, that's cool. That that one's yeah. good. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, I just want to thank everyone who tuned in for this. This was a nice overview and a little bit of a deep dive into Trinity Continuum. Uh, we got a nice history lesson on the story of Aeon slash Trinity slash Trinity Trinity slash <laughs> um, Aberrant. Um, if you want to learn more about it, uh, theonyxpath.com. And obviously there's a lot of really cool content coming in the near future uh, between Assassins and Anima and Adventure and all the other cool things. So keep an eye out for all of those. And um, I'm sure that we will talk more about Trinity in the future because now I need to go pick up some books. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So, thank you everyone who tuned in. I hope you enjoyed this short Tuesday stream. Short for us, not not for others. Um, and we will be back tomorrow for Worlds and Crafts. On Thursday, I'm starting a new Let's Play. I think I'm going to be playing Layers of Fear, but I might be playing Hellblade. I'm not sure yet. The votes are not in. And um, I'm trying to think if we have anything else special coming up on Friday or Saturday. Nope. Uh, Sunday, Forbidden Lands. So, Keep an eye out. We'll see you soon. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.